Hey, what's up coders, I'm Coderius, and today we will look at something you've been using since you created your first c -sharp script. By the way, um, I haven't posted much in the past month and it's because I moved to England. I have now settled in my new apartment and should have a little bit more time for YouTube videos. Alright, the topic of today's video is the order of execution inside mono behavior scripts. If you are not entirely new to Unity, you already know the start and update functions that are generated by default by Unity when we create a script. There are many other functions executed in a specific order for each mono behavior script. Understanding how they work together will be the goal of this tutorial. And before we start, take a moment to like and subscribe, and I see you in Unity! Alright, you can find the chart with the order of execution in the Unity manual. Check the link in the description. We will first go through the different functions and after that code the short example to illustrate what we've learned. Running a script in Unity executes several events in a predefined order during the lifetime of the game object, from its creation all the way through its destruction. It starts with the initialization. These events or functions are executed only once. The most used events in the initialization are awake and start. Awake is executed just before start. The performance is the same whether instructions are executed in awake or start. One big difference though is that awake will be executed on any object, whereas start will be only executed on objects that are enabled. Start can also be executed as a coroutine. After the initialization, Unity starts working on the physics, with the event fixed update, which can be executed several times during the same frame, unlike the standard update event. The fixed time step can be changed in the project settings in the time menu. In principle, code that uses physics, like adding force, should be executed in the fixed update. Then comes the animation update. It relates, as its name indicates, to everything related to animations. It is followed by the on-trigger and on-collision events. These guys are checking when game objects with rigid bodies and colliders are touching each other. We will see that in the example. Last event of the physics loop is yield wait for fixed update, used in coroutines. Just between the physics and the game logic, we have the input events like the on-mouse events. Alright, next one is the game logic loop with the update function, which is executed once per frame. That's where most of the code logic should be executed. That's also where coroutines are resumed from the previous frame. After all that, there is the late update function, which allows code to be executed after the main loop. The last part is dedicated to rendering. There is also the yield wait for end of frame for coroutines that are executed right at the end of the frame. And at the end, the game object dies when the application quits or when the game object is destroyed. Okay, let's look at a small example and create a new default 3D project. We will use two default cubes and call them with very original names like cube1 and cube2. In cube1, we add a rigid body, remove gravity and set the collision detection to continuous dynamic. In cube2, we add a second box collider with the east trigger checked. We also add a rigid body without gravity and with continuous dynamic collision detection on. Okay, let's move cube2 away and add a C-sharp script to it. In this script, we will see how the execution order is processed. Let's add few variables, three counters, one for the fixed update, update and late update, and let's add three boolean fields to make sure we print stuff in the various updates only once in the console, else it's gonna be a bit messy. By default we have only the start and update functions, but we've seen in the theory that there are many other events inherited from the mono behavior class, like the awake event. So we can implement the awake function and initialize our counters to zero and variables to true. And let's print something in the console from here as well. Let's move on to the start function, in which we will also print something nice. Then comes the fixed update. Here we increment our fixed update counter by 1 and print something just once if our boolean is true. Then we switch the boolean to false. We do the same in the update function and the late update function. Ok, let's play with the physics a little bit too. We can call the onCollisionEnter function and onTriggerEnter and print something in there. Why not printing the name of the object with which we are colliding and the time of the impact? Lastly, let's print few things, not in the console but using onGui. Very simple, we just create three labels and print each counter in their respective label.
Awesome, let's go back to the Unity interface and enter play mode. The messages are printed in the correct order from the awake, start, fixed update, update loop and finally the late update. We also see that the fixed update is triggered less frequently than the update and late update loops, which are executed once per frame. The frame rate will depend on the machine on which the program is run and the complexity of the operations. Here the frame rate is very high because the scene is simple and therefore update and late update are executed more often than the fixed update. The fixed update is, as its name indicates, fixed, but the time step can be changed in the project settings in the time menu. It is 0.02 by default, meaning 50 times per second. If we increase this time step, we can see that the fixed update is now triggered more often than the update and late update functions. Ok, let's bump cube 1 into cube 2, and the info is properly displayed in the console with the trigger being called first, followed by the on collision enter. Great, there is one last thing I'd like to cover. If we have two scripts, who decides which of the two awake or start function is executed first? Let's add a new c -sharp script to our cube 1 and display something in the start function. Now if we run the code again, we see that the start function is executed first in the cube 1 and then in the cube 2. How could we tell Unity to first execute the cube 2 code instead? There is one trick for that. In the project settings, go in the script execution order. Here we can add our cube 1 and cube 2 scripts and just select the order by dragging and dropping cube 1 after cube 2. If we try again, cube 2 is now executed first. And that's already the end of the video, I hope you liked it. If that's the case, thank you very much for giving a thumbs up and why not subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, keep coding and see you next time.